In this video, we will examine the life of Apolinario Mabini, the brain behind the Philippine Revolution. Mabini's full name is Apolinario Mabini E. Maradan. Mabini's birthday is July 23, 1864. He was born in the town of Talaga Tanawan, Batangas. His parents were Inocencio Mabini and Dionysia Maranan. He was one of eight children, the second born. Mabini's parents were very poor. His father was a peasant farmer and his mother was a vendor at the local market. Given his exceptional intelligence and diligence, Mabini was given the chance to attend school. He worked as a houseboy servant and a tailor's assistant to pay for his food and lodging while attending school. Fray Valerio Malabanan was the head of the school where he attended. Mabini, then 17 years old, was awarded a partial scholarship to the Colegio de San Juan de la Tran in Manila in 1881. He worked all through school once more, this time by instructing younger students in Latin. In 1887, Apolinario received both his bachelor's degree and certification as a Latin professor. He then continued his education by enrolling in the University of Santo Tomas Law Program. In school, he had experienced prejudice from peers and teachers who made fun of him for his unkempt appearance before realizing how intelligent he was. Since Mabini worked long hours as a law clerk and a court transcriptionist in addition to his studies, it took him six years to finish his law degree. Finally, at the age of 30, he received his law degree in 1894. Mabini later went on to practice law and advocate for the poor and underprivileged. Dr. Jose Rizal, a national hero of the Philippines, participated in this movement as well. Mabini participated in the founding of the reformist Cuerpo de Comprimisarios in September 1894. This organization sought to bargain for better treatment from Spanish authorities. Mabini was admitted to the bar in 1895 and began working as a young attorney in Manila's Adriano Law Offices where he also held the position of secretary for the Cuerpo de Comprimisarios. Most of the pro-independence activists, primarily from the lower classes, joined the Katipunan Movement. The Katipunan Movement, founded by Andres Bonifacio, promoted an armed uprising against Spain. Apolinario Mabini, however, contracted polio at the beginning of 1896, paralyzing his legs. In October 1896, Mabini was detained by the colonial police because of his involvement in the reform movement. On December 30 of that year, when Jose Rizal was summarily executed by the colonial government, he was still under house arrest at the San Juan de Dios Hospital and it is thought that Mabini's polio likely spared him the same fate. Apolinario Mabini was unable to participate in the start of the Philippine Revolution due to his illness and imprisonment. However, Mabini was radicalized by his experiences and the execution of Rizal, and he became preoccupied with issues of independence and revolution. He wrote a manifesto on the Spanish-American War in April 1898 foreseeing that Spain would likely cede the Philippines to the United States if it lost the conflict and forewarning other Philippine revolutionary leaders of this possibility. He urged the people of the Philippines to continue their fight for independence. General Emilio Aguinaldo, who had previously ordered the death penalty for Andres Bonifacio and had been forced into exile in Hong Kong by the Spanish, became aware of Mabini as a result of this manifesto. On May 19, 1898, the Americans brought Aguinaldo back from exile in the hopes of using him against the Spanish in the Philippines. As soon as he got back to the Philippines, Aguinaldo told his men to bring the author of the war manifesto to him and they had to carry the polio-stricken Mabini 
through the mountains to Cavite on a stretcher. On June 12, 1898, Mabini arrived at Aguinaldo's camp and quickly established himself as one of the general's main advisors. Aguinaldo proclaimed independence for the Philippines on the same day and appointed himself as its dictator. Mabini was successful in convincing Aguinaldo to abandon his plans to rule the Philippines in an autocratic fashion on July 23, 1898. He persuaded the new leader to install an assembly-based revolutionary government as opposed to a dictatorship. Because of Apolinario Mabini's success in convincing Aguinaldo, his admirers dubbed him the sublime paralytic. Because Mabini's morals and personal life were hard to criticize, his adversaries in the new government turned to a whispering campaign to discredit him. They spread the rumor that he had syphilis rather than polio because they were envious of his great power even though syphilis does not result in paraplegia. Mabini kept working to build a better nation despite the rumors that were circulating. The majority of Aguinaldo's presidential decrees were written by him. He also shaped government policy regarding the structure of the provinces, the legal system, and the police as well as regarding land registration and military rules. He was given the positions of President of the Council of Secretaries and Secretary of Foreign Affairs in Aguinaldo's cabinet. In these capacities, Mabini had a significant impact on the creation of the Philippine Republic's first constitution. On January 2, 1899, when the Philippines were on the verge of yet another war, Mabini was appointed as both the Prime Minister and the Foreign Minister, continuing his ascent to the ranks of the new government. On March 6 of that year, Mabini started negotiating with the U.S. over the future of the Philippines. After the United States defeated Spain, hostilities had already begun between the United States and the Philippines, though no formal war had been declared. Mabini attempted to negotiate a ceasefire with American troops and autonomy for the Philippines, but the United States rejected the armistice. Mabini supported the war effort out of frustration and left Aguinaldo's government on May 7. Aguinaldo then declared war on June 2 after less than a month. The revolutionary government in Cavite was forced to leave as soon as war was declared. Mabini was once again transported in a hammock, this time to Nueva Ecija. He was taken prisoner by American forces on December 10, 1899 and held there until September of the following year. Mabini wrote a critical newspaper article titled El Simil de Alejandro or The Resemblance of Alejandro after being released on January 5, 1901. After writing the article, the Americans detained him again, and when he refused to swear allegiance to them, they exiled him to Guam. While in exile in Guam, Apolinario Mabini penned a memoir titled La Revolution Filipina. Mabini, who was weak and ill, made the decision to swear allegiance to the U.S. out of concern that he would die in exile. When Mabini returned to the Philippines on February 26, 1903, American officials there offered him a lucrative government position as a reward for taking the filthy oath, but Mabini turned them down. Over the ensuing months, Mabini kept up his pro-independence rhetoric in both his writing and speaking. At only 38 years old, he passed away on May 13, 1903 from cholera, which had spread throughout the nation as a result of the long-running war. Mabini, like fellow Filipino revolutionaries Jose Rizal and Andres Bonifacio, died before turning 40. Nevertheless, despite having a brief career, he had a significant impact on the Philippines' future and the revolutionary government. The life and accomplishments of Mabini are on display at the Polinario Mabini Museum in Tanawan, Philippines. The 10 peso coin and bill in the Philippines both feature Mabini's image.
Filipinos who have distinguished themselves in foreign service are given the Gawad Mabini Award. I hope you enjoy this video. Please support this channel by liking, sharing, and subscribing.